smoke in the trash can. These niggas been coppin' out this smoke, we done passed that. I'm tired of that hoe, wanna hear her friend because I ain't seen my bro. Told him crack, I don't know why he did. Wish I would ride that on that drill, I ain't seen my dog in a minute. I can guess what people do for a living just by looking at their hands. I mean, I'm usually wrong, but I can guess. Today, I'm going to recap a 2022 action thriller film called Section 8. The movie begins five years ago in Mosul, Afghanistan, where a drone flies over a village as a man runs down a dusty road, calling the attention of the Taliban. The man warns an older member that the Americans are coming, while the others bury an improvised explosive device. Soon, the American troops arrive and begin to scout the area as the town immediately becomes deserted. Oblivious that the enemy is hiding inside the houses, Pretty Boy, the squad leader, pushes forward and finds a suspicious man preparing a bomb. Thus, they immediately surround him. Jake, who thinks they are taking too long, aggressively orders the man to drop the weapon. They threaten to shoot him if he fails to comply. Unwilling to follow them, he becomes agitated and pulls out a gun, which forces the troops to shoot him. A few moments later, Colonel Tom Mason, their commanding officer, asks about the situation over the radio. Jake informs him that there is a dead informant where an emplaced IED was set up for them. He then asks permission to disarm it, but Mason opposes it. Still, he chooses to do it and successfully disarms the bomb. Soon after, the second bomb goes off, killing everyone but Jake. The Taliban ambushes them and shoot from all directions. Jake gets up and runs from the scene as Mason covers for him. He then fights back and comes to Mason's aid. When he reaches Mason, an enemy sneaks up behind, but luckily Mason saves his life. In the present day, the confident soldier is now an anxious civilian. Jake is integrated back into America, but struggles with the memories of war. He has PTSD and is taking medicine to combat it. He also tries to live a normal life by working at Earl's Auto Shop in Riverside, California. Later that day, Jake comes home and spends time with his family. Their bright mood immediately changes when his wife, Ashton, shows him a pile of bills on the counter. She worries about how they will get by, but he assures her they will get through it like they always do. He then shifts the mood by playfully taking a piece of chicken before running away. The next day, Jake goes to work and encounters a conflict with Mexican gangsters to whom Earl owes money. It soon escalates into a physical fight as Fresh, the gang's leader, orders his men to beat him up. Jake quickly and skillfully attacks them, but before he can target Fresh, he threatens him with a gun. Fresh threatens to meet him again and then leaves. After the incident, Jake confronts Earl about the danger he got himself into. Earl shares that he used to be one of them, but is fortunate enough to leave that life, and now has a home he calls his own. Jake worries about his family's safety, but Earl assures him that he will protect their neighborhood at all cost. But later that night, tragedy hits Jake as Fresh shows up and tells him it's payback time. In a panic, he rushes inside the house and finds his family dead. He screams in anguish and mourns for his sudden loss. A few moments later, the police arrive at the scene and try to speak with Jake, but he loses his senses as he rushes to his car and frantically searches for Fresh. Not long after, he sees Fresh's car parked outside a club where he plans to catch him to avenge his family. Without remorse, he shoots the gang, and when he is about to kill Fresh, Fresh explains that he has no choice but to do it, but his words do not shake Jake's resolve, and he instantly kills him. Five months later, Jake is serving time in prison for his crime. He is severely affected by the death of his family and remains haunted by his past. Mason then visits him and offers to help him out on his case, but he insists that he belongs in prison after what he's done. Mason tries to comfort him, but his words are meaningless as Jake explains that he killed them without remorse and would still do it again if he had to. He then ends their conversation by telling Mason never to come back. After that, he receives an unexpected visitor named Ramsey, who runs a private task force. Jake quickly dismisses him before he gets the chance to explain himself. That night, masked men invade his cell and kidnap him. Moments later, Ramsey reveals himself and his men responsible for taking him. He tells him he's been watching him for a long time and is impressed by his record. He then asks him to choose 
whether to rot in prison or live a new life by joining his unit. After careful thought, Jake decides to live as a hero again by working under a secret government agency called Section 8. In Washington, D.C., Ramsey formally introduces Elias, Ajax, Brunner, and Mueller, and briefs him about what they do. Jake secretly takes a pen from a nearby desk before he gets led into another room. Ramsey further explains that his real identity has been declared deceased, and he will be given a new alias and backstory. When Ramsey leaves, the team puts him through the initiation process. Ajax starts to provoke him by stirring up a fight with him. Jake is initially reluctant, but eventually fights back and almost stabs his eye with the pen. A memory of his family suddenly flashes in his mind, which gives him time to calm down. Soon, Jake gets sent on his first mission with Mueller. She briefs him on his first target, Alejandro Castillo, a defense contractor that is also a black market weapon dealer. She tells him that the job is to retrieve a schematic file and eliminate Alejandro before he sells them to the Russians. Upon arriving in Mexico, they find Castillo in a warehouse, where he meets with Johnny, a Russian negotiator, to make the exchange. While they engage in a conversation, Jake sneaks into the place and discreetly takes out a guard. The noise catches their attention, which turns them against each other. Their misunderstanding escalates into shooting, and Jake takes advantage of it by sneakily killing any survivors. He then takes down an injured Castillo, takes the files, and leaves, sparing two innocent women. Upon returning to their base, Ramsey reprimands him for compromising the integrity of their mission by leaving survivors. He then threatens to send him back to prison if he doesn't comply. Jake is then dismissed, and Mueller gives an evaluation of his performance. She commends him, but Ramsey is unsatisfied with it. The next day, Locke swiftly infiltrates a hotel with the mission of eliminating a target who knows Ramsey. The man tries to bribe him, but it doesn't sway him. Thus, he still gets killed. On his way out, the guards suspect him and chase after him. He easily overpowers the authorities and gets away in a stolen car. Meanwhile, Jake moves into a new house. He finds a picture of his time in Afghanistan, which reminds him of a conversation he had with Mason. Jake blames himself for getting him injured, but Mason shares some wise words to ease his guilt. Later, Mueller finds Jake in a pub where they bond over drinks. He then asks her about Ramsey, but she claims she doesn't know anything. Thus, he asked for her story. Instead, she tells him that she used to be in the army, but got reprimanded for punching her commanding officer. Not long after, Ramsey briefs them on their new mission. The target is a state senator named Jim Graham. The objectives are to retrieve digital information from a sensitive case and to eliminate the target. He assigns Mueller to recover the files while Jake is on bird watch, and the rest are for reinforcements. He makes it clear that the security will be strict, thus they should expect to fight back. Later they arrive in California disguised as landscapers. Mueller takes down the guards in the room, but inevitably alarms the security, which compromises the mission. With their cover blown, Jake chases after Graham, while Mueller takes care of the files. Jake eventually corners Graham, but hesitates when he reasons he has a family. Unfortunately, Ajax catches up to them and immediately eliminates Graham. That night, Jake is affected by the words of Graham and can't help but remember his wife. But because of his hesitation, he is now a target of Section 8. Masked men invade his home to hunt him down, but luckily he escapes. He then goes to see Mason, and they talk about Section 8. Mason clarifies that if he is their fugitive, he is in serious trouble. Thus, Jake asks for help to lend him money and a gun to escape. Upon returning to Riverside, Jake finds out from his son best friend that before his family's murder, Fresh was seen with people in suits. But before he can get any more information, Locke intervenes to kill him. Jake narrowly escapes as Locke shoots every person in his way, including the authorities. Locke then calls Ramsey and tells him that he lost Jake, but Ramsey provokes him, which challenges him more to find Jake. That same day, the Section 8 unit finds Jake at Earl's shop. Jake fiercely fights for his life against Elias and Brunner and successfully takes them down. However, Ajax is a strong opponent as he almost gets the upper hand. Jake almost gets stabbed. 
Luckily, Muller arrives and shoots Ajax dead. After the fight, Earl hands Jake the keys to a car and tells him to leave before the police arrive. In the car, Mueller and Jake argue about not trusting each other. He then asks Romsey's whereabouts to end it once and for all. They go to Montana, where Romsey is supposed to meet with some congressmen. The two try to sneak into the cabin, but Jake gets knocked out. Eventually, he wakes up bound to a chair with Romsey in front of him and Mueller beside him. Romsey reveals that this was all a trap and that they prepared a surprise for him. The door opens as Tom enters the room. Jake is confused by his sudden appearance, but his questions are soon answered as they reveal they are responsible for killing his family. Since they see his family as a waste of his talent, after giving Romsey the money, Tom excuses himself while Mueller checks the money. He then sneaks back to the room and frees Jake. He tells him the truth that he was contracted to take down Section 8. The alarm then goes off, alerting Romsey's men. Despite being outnumbered, the strong duo quickly overthrows them. Once they cornered Romsey, Jake made it clear to them that he wanted to see him die. Romsey then tries to deceive him by turning him against Tom, but he doesn't buy it. As Mueller sneaks up to shoot Jake, Tom takes a bullet for him and dies. Taking the chance, Romsey flees while Mueller takes down Jake. From the start, she seems to get the upper hand, but after a brief struggle, Jake quickly turns the odds in his favor, instantly killing her. He then chases after Romsey, and Romsey eventually crashes into an oncoming car. Jake walks over to the wreck, where an injured Romsey insults him for hesitating. Before he can finish talking, Jake shoots him. Jake then meets with Addy, General Savoy, where Savoy offers him a job and a clean slate. He also tells him that Tom worked for them, but Jake declines the offer saying that he has nothing left to fight for. Savoy understands but offers him his card anyway. Jake then goes home to his house, where Locke waits for him. He intends to finish the job even without Romsey. Thus, they get into an intense fight. Although Locke initially gets the upper hand, Jake eventually gets the gun and eliminates Locke. The movie ends with Jake sending a voice message to Earl, thanking him for saving his life just as his father saved him.